Genesis chapter 11, the Tower of Babel, verse 1, now the whole world had one language and a common speech. Verse 2, as people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. Verse 3, they said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone, and tar for mortar. Verse 4, then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city, with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves, otherwise we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Verse 5, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. Verse 6, The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Verse 7, Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. Verse 8, So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. Verse 9, That is why it was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. From Shem to Abram verse 10. This is the account of Shem's family line. Two years after the flood, when Shem was 100 years old, he became the father d of Arphaxed. Verse 11. And after he became the father of Arphaxed, Shem lived 500 years and had other sons and daughters. Verse 12. When Arphaxed had lived 35 years, he became the father of Shelah. Verse 13, And after he became the father of Shelah, Arphaxed lived 403 years and had other sons and daughters. Verse 14, When Shelah had lived 30 years, he became the father of Eber. Verse 15, And after he became the father of Eber, Shelah lived 403 years and had other sons and daughters. Verse 16, when Eber had lived 34 years, he became the father of Peleg. Verse 17, and after he became the father of Peleg, Eber lived 430 years and had other sons and daughters. Verse 18, when Peleg had lived 30 years, he became the father of Reu. Verse 19, And after he became the father of Reu, Peleg lived two hundred and nine years and had other sons and daughters. Verse 20, When Reu had lived thirty-two years, he became the father of Serig, twenty-one and after he became the father of Serig, Reu lived two hundred and seven years and had other sons and daughters. Verse 22, when Serig had lived thirty years, he became the father of Nahor. Verse 23, and after he became the father of Nahor, Serig lived two hundred years and had other sons and daughters. Verse 24, when Nahor had lived twenty-nine years, he became the father of Terah. Verse 25, And after he became the father of Terah, Nahor lived 119 years and had other sons and daughters. Verse 26, After Terah had lived 70 years, he became the father of Abram, Nahor and Haran. Abram's family Verse 27. This is the account of Terah's family line. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahor and Haran. And Haran became the father of Lot. Verse 28. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Yor of the Chaldeans, in the land of his birth. Verse 29. Abram and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milcah and Iscah. Verse 30. Now Sarai was childless because she was not able to conceive. 
verse 31. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Yor of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Verse 32. Terah lived 205 years, and he died in Haran. Commentary. Genesis chapter 11, Mankind after the Flood, the Tower of Babel. Letter A. The Tower of Babel. Number 1. The Tower in the Land of Shinna. Verses 1 to 4. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinna, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and a tower whose top is in the heavens, let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. Letter A. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. If we accept the biblical teaching that mankind has a common origin in Adam, then this simply makes sense, that there was a time when humanity spoke one language instead of the hundreds on the earth today. Letter B. The land of Shinna. Shinna was a term used also of Babylon. Genesis chapter 10 verse 10. The multiplied descendants from the ark came together to build a great city and tower, in rebellion against God's command to spread out over the earth. Genesis chapter 9 verse 1. Let us see, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had asphalt for mortar. Using baked bricks and asphalt for mortar, men built a tower that was both strong and waterproof, even as Noah used the same material in waterproofing the ark. Genesis chapter 6 verse 14. Later Moses' mother used the same material in waterproofing Moses' basket. Exodus chapter 2 verse 3. Archaeology has revealed that this type of kiln-fired brick and asphalt construction was common in ancient Babylon. Morris, letter D, come, let us build ourselves a city. The heart and the materials relevant to the Tower of Babel show that it was not only disobedient to God's command to fill the earth, Genesis chapter 9 verse 1, but it also shows man did not believe God's promise to never again flood the earth. A waterproof tower was made to protect man against a future deluge. This was a strong statement of self against God. When they said let us build ourselves a city, and a tower whose top is in the heavens, they meant it. Letter E. A tower whose top is in the heavens, the top of the tower was intended to be in the heavens. It is doubtful they thought they could build a tower to heaven. It is more likely they built the tower as an observation point of the heavens, it was built, unto the heavens. Most astrological and occult practices have a history back to Babel. If they really wanted to build a tower to reach heaven, it is unlikely they would start on the plain of Shinna, which is about sea level. Common sense says they would start on one of the nearby mountains. This tower was real. The ancient Greek historian Herodotus said the Tower of Babel still stood in his day and he had seen it. Number 2. God scatters them over the whole earth. Verses 5-9. to But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed the people are one and they all have one language, and this is what they begin to do, now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city.
therefore its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Letter A. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower. The personal character of the language indicates this perhaps was a time when God came down in the form of a man, in the person of Jesus Christ. Letter B. Let us go down. This plural reference to us is another subtle reference to the Trinity. Let us see, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. The potential of fallen man is terrible and powerful. When we think of the horrific accomplishments of evil from men in the 20th century, the great ability of men and nations is a painful consideration. Letter D. So the Lord scattered them abroad. The forced separation of men from Babel was more God's mercy than his judgment. God, in dividing man both linguistically and geographically, put a check on the power of his fallen nature. Letter E. The Lord confused the language of all the earth. The division of the languages is a fascinating subject. Modern linguists know man did not invent language, any more than man invented his own circulatory or nervous system. Most modern linguists believe language is so unique that the only way they can explain it apart from God is to say that it was part of a unique evolutionary process. Language cannot be the product of man putting together sounds all by himself. For example, there are many universal human sounds, like the raspberry sound, that are not part of any human language. If man invented language on his own, it would make sense for some language to use that sound. Language is so complex because languages exist as whole systems, not as small parts put together. Most modern linguists believe all languages come from one original language. Letter F. From there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Think what it was like for a family to leave the area of Babel and go out on their own. They must look for a suitable place to live, and once they found it, they must exist by hunting and gathering, living in crude dwellings or caves until they could support themselves by agriculture and taking advantage of the natural resources. Families would multiply rapidly, develop their own culture, and their own distinctive biological and physical characteristics influenced by their environment. In the small population, genetic characteristics change very quickly, and as the population of the group grew bigger, the changes stabilized and became more or less permanent. The whole account of what happened at Babel with its anti-God dictator, its organized rebellion against God, and its direct distrust of God's promise shows man hasn't gotten any better since the flood. Time, progress, government, and organization have made man better off, but not better. Now God will begin to make man better, and he will start as he always starts, with a man who will do his will, even if he does not do his will perfectly. Letter B. The line of Adam through Shem to Abram. Number 1. From Shem to Terah, the father of Abram. Verses 10 to 25. This is the genealogy of Shem. Shem was 100 years old, and begot Arphax, two years after the flood. After he begot Arphax, Shem lived 500 years, and begot sons and daughters. Arphax lived 35 years, and begot Salah. After he begot Salah, Arphax lived 403 years, and begot sons and daughters. Salah lived 30 years, and begot Eba. After he begot Eba, Salah lived 403 years, and begot sons and daughters. Eba lived 34 years, and begot Peleg. 
after he begot Peleg, ever lived four hundred and thirty years, and begot sons and daughters. Peleg lived thirty years, and begot Reu. After he begot Reu, Peleg lived two hundred and nine years, and begot sons and daughters. Reu lived thirty-two years, and begot Serig. After he begot Serig, Reu lived two hundred and seven years, and begot sons and daughters. Serig lived thirty years, and begot Nahor. After he begot Nahor, Serig lived two hundred years, and begot sons and daughters. Nahor lived twenty-nine years, and begot Terah. After he begot Terah, Nahor lived one hundred and nineteen years, and begot sons and daughters. Letter A. This is the genealogy of Shem. This genealogy is of special note because it will eventually be part of the messianic line. It is followed in genealogical record of Luke 3. Letter B. Nahor lived twenty-nine years, and begot Terah, these were the grandfather and father of Abraham. The promise to bring forth the deliverer from the seed of the woman, Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, would find its fulfillment through this family. Number 2. The family of Terah in Yor of the Chaldeans. Verses 26-28. Now Terah lived seventy years, and begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. This is the genealogy of Terah, Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Haran begot Lot, and Haran died before his father Terah in his native land, in Yor of the Chaldeans. Letter A. Now Terah lived seventy years, and begot Abram. Genesis chapter 11 verse 26 is the first mention of Abram. Abram, later changed to Abraham, is mentioned 312 times in 272 verses in the Bible. He is arguably the most famous man of the Old Testament, and certainly one of the most influential men in history. The book of Genesis covers more than 2,000 years and more than 20 generations. Yet, it spends almost a third of its text on the life of one man, Abram. Letter B. Terah begot Abram. Abram is unique in the way he is called the friend of God. James chapter 2 verse 23. Abraham, your friend forever. 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 7. Abraham, my friend. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 8. We all know the value of having friends in high places. Abram had a friend in the highest place. Once Abraham Lincoln received a request for a pardon from a man who deserted the army. When he was told the man had no friends, Lincoln said, I will be his friend, and he pardoned him. Men and women in the Bible are famous for many different things, but Abram is great for his faith. Moses was the great lawgiver, Joshua a great general, David a great king, and Elijah a great prophet. Most of us know we can never be great in those things, but we can be great people of faith. We can be friends of God. If you despair in knowing you do not have Abram's faith, take comfort in knowing you have Abram's God. He can build in you the faith of Abram because he built it in Abram himself. You do have faith. You buy a ticket to a sporting event and show up, having faith the ticket is good. You fly in an airplane because you have faith in the airline's equipment, mechanics, and pilots. You plan a weekend based on the weather report. And you do this even though sometimes there are ticket scandals, sometimes planes crash, and sometimes the weatherman is wrong, but you still have faith. God can build the faith you have. Number 3. The family of Abram and his brother Nahor. 
verses 29 to 30 then Abram and Nahor took wives the name of Abram's wife was Sarai and the name of Nahor's wife Milcah the daughter of Haran the father of Milcah and the father of Iscah but Sarai was barren she had no child Letter A. Then Abram and Nahor took wives, Abram's wife Sarai, her name means contentious, was barren, unable to bear children. Letter B. Abram's wife was Sarai, she had no child, because the name Abram means father, it must have been an awkward embarrassment for Abram to explain that he had no children but his present lack of children will play an important role in God's plan of redemption. Number 4. The family of Terah and their travels from Yor of the Chaldeans to Haran. Verses 31-32 and Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and they went out with them from Yor of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan, and they came to Haran and dwelt there. So the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. Letter A. They went out with them from Yor of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. Abram's story begins in Yor of the Chaldeans, Babylon. Joshua chapter 24 verse 2 describes Abram before the Lord called him. He was from a family of idol worshippers and was probably an idol worshipper himself, notwithstanding Jewish legends. Abram came from a family of idol worshippers. Later, when Abram's grandson Jacob went back to Abram's relatives, they were still worshipping idols. Letter B. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. Acts chapter 7 verses 2 to 4 makes it clear the call of Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 3 came to Abram while he still lived in Yor. When he received this call from God he was only halfway obedient in at least two ways. First, he brought his father Terah and nephew Lot with him, when the Lord called Abram out of your country, from your family, Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. Second, Abram stopped and, at least for a time, dwelt in Haran, and not to where God promised, a land that I will show you, Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. They start together for Canaan. So far so good, at least, it looks so. The traveling is wearisome, and many are the murmurings. The huge caravan has not gone very far before the proposal is made that they should be satisfied with the move which they had made, and remain at Haran. True, it was not Canaan, but it might do as well. Spurgeon, halfway obedience increases our responsibility, because it is a plain confession that we know the Lord's will, though we do it not. Abram had received the call, and knew that he had done so, else why had he come to Haran? He admitted, by going as far as Haran, that he ought to go the whole way to Canaan, and so, by his own action he left himself without excuse. Spurgeon, let us see, Terah died in Haran, sometimes we can gain meaning from names in the Bible. The name Terah means delay. The name Haran means parched, barren. When Abram was in partial obedience, then delay and barrenness marked his life. When we knowingly disobey God, we often delay the outworking of his plan in our lives and we also experience barrenness. The result of this to Abram was the absence of privilege. God spoke not to his servant in Haran, neither dream, nor vision, nor voice came to him in the place of hesitancy. The Lord loved him, but hid his face from him, and denied him the visits of his grace. Spurgeon, 